Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. It is the premier business radio program in the area. I'm your host, Mike King. I appreciate you being here with me. The views expressed here are mine. I have no connection to support of agreement with any of the hosts, information or ads on the stations that you hear me on. I don't work for the stations. My program just air there on a daily basis. Join me at this cutting edge show. We uplift the community and showcase RVA in a different way. The sounds you're listening to today are coming to you from the Common House. 303 West Broad. It is the premier social and the social club co-working space in the Richmond area. Follow me on all social platforms. Hashtag Mike King Biz. Hashtag on the mic with Mike. We'd like to thank our show sponsors, Tom Children, the credit card guy. If you have credit card merchant issues, Tom Children is the man. He can help you with that. He can help you get paid faster. He is a business advocate. Andy Taylor and Junk Luggers. If you have things around a household that you need to remove, Andy Taylor can help you. That is bikes, hot tubs, uh, everything from an entire room to an entire household. If you have people around the house you need removed, don't call Andy Taylor. He can't help you. Stop giving gas money, change the internet password, and stop cooking. That'll help you. So Andy Taylor and Junk Luggers, eco-friendly. They're out in Ashland, the center of the universe. And also check out Mama Michelle's Cafe, good friend, Chef Michelle Wilson, Mama Michelle's Cafe. She is on TV, Cleo T, no, 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 Cleo Taste on TV with her TV show, The Culture Mix. All righty, I'm minding my business out here. I'm just a humble talk show host. I see this lady doing some really big things. There's a program called Story. And I saw that, I'm like, okay. So you know what I do? I reach out and I say, hey, my name is Mike King. Would you like to come on my show? And I'm sure the lady said, who's Mike King? So I'm here with Catherine. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, you're going to have to talk a little bit louder for us. Okay. All righty. So let us know your story, who you are and what you do, and all about the outstanding your things you're doing down in Hopewell and the Tri-Cities. Okay. Um, you just cut off your... Oh. Okay, you're live. Hey, Instagram. Oh. How y'all doing? All right. So <laughs> on the mic with Mike, Mike Catherine here. We are on ESPN Richmond, and uh, we're going to talk about your story, about story. So my name is Katherine Thompson, and I'm the executive director of Story, a nonprofit I co-founded in Hopewell, Virginia. It started under the auspices of the Hopewell Redevelopment and Housing Authority. I'm the former grant writer for the agency, and we created Story because HUD was reducing funding for a resident services program. So we created Story to provide um, services and programs to public housing residents that lived um, in Hopewell. And then we made it um, a little bit bigger of a vision to include all of Southside Virginia for low-income residents and citizens. And so exactly what is Story? Story is a nonprofit. Um, we operate out of Hopewell right now. We want to serve all of Southside Virginia. So that okay. would be like Tri-Cities all the way down to Emporia area. And what type of services do you guys offer? Our signature program is called the ML2 Youth Development Program. Okay. So that provides after school and mentoring services for grades K through five. With the COVID pandemic, we're gonna expand that to include older youth. Um, we'll roll out the programs this year as we increased capacity with staff and volunteers. We've also been doing systems change work for the last three years, and we just wrapped up a project called Improving Health Outcomes Through Storytelling. I always talk to people and ask them, what are the streets saying? How are people doing out there? You know, coming through the pandemic, we're in the 2022, we've been dealing with this for a while. How are the young folks doing? We just reopened our program this past Monday, actually. So right now we're giving the youth that are um, coming to the program digital assessments in math and reading to assess where they are. And those that have taken the test right now are scoring around 50% for their grade level. So we'll use digital tools to get them back on track before the pandemic hit. 85% um, of our students were at honor roll. And let us know your background. Where, where do you come from? And all of a sudden you start, so you are a grant writer. Yes. Okay, tell us your story. 
Um, I was closing loans at Bank of America. <laughs> okay, there we go. Boy, that's right down that path. That's, there you go. I don't from, know how I got From here. Bank of America to a nonprofit. Yeah. There we go. I graduated from uh, VCU with a degree in public relations, and I was closing loans for Bank of America, and a friend called who was working at the Petersburg Redevelopment and Housing Authority and said, please come help me. And I said, doing what? And she said, resident services. I said, what is that? What's that? She said, I don't know. Just don't make me look bad. And I said, okay. <laughs> Here I am. So you show up at Bank of America. The Housing Authority in Petersburg first in 2009 after. Yeah, I left Bank of America. And so you went there. What was? What is it about nonprofit work that, that draws you to it? I like helping people. I was helping people closing loans. But, but this it's was, not the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, but sometimes I miss closing loans because I could just, you know, go home at the end of the day and turn it off. So out. in other words, you just can't drop stories and it's over. No. This is something that's with you all the time. Yeah, yeah. When you help someone, what's it feel like when the light goes off and they get it and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this, this really happened? I get really excited. It's, it's very fulfilling. Um, it, it has nothing to do with me, but it's all about um, residents in public housing often have like many stereotypes that accompany them. Um, there's tons of barriers and challenges to get through if you are trying to provide them services. So when someone gets it and succeeds, it's a win on a scale that is monumental, really. All right. And how can people find information on story out there? Our Instagram is story VA. Our uh, Facebook is Story VA One because the first one got hacked. <laughs> you have no respect out there. <laughs> no. <laughs> and our website is https um, backslash backslash storyva.org. What would you want people to know about Story that they that they wouldn't know? Um, story has. Well, number one, this is year seven. So we made it to year seven and that's amazing. <clears throat> we started with zero dollars. So when you made it to him, made it zero dollars, <laughs> you had a dream and now you make it to year seven. Yeah. At what point did you think that you might have a chance of making it? Um, I think coming into year three, <clears throat> okay. yeah, we got an initial um, investment from the Cameron Foundation. And when another, when the John Randolph Foundation come on board, I was like, oh, we might be able to do this. We might be able to do it. <laughs> this too. <laughs> so all of a sudden we're we're uh we're coming, you're coming along, you're chugging along, you're okay, you know, you're you're swimming there yeah. and the pandemic hits. What did that do to you guys? And what have you learned coming through the pandemic that you didn't do before, but all of a sudden, you know what you're saying? Hey, this isn't bad right here. I think we will continue doing it. The pandemic program wise threw me into a tailspin and it, for organizations serving like public housing and low-income communities, it threw us all into a tailspin and we had to figure out new ways of operating. So um, Virginia Mentor held monthly TA calls, thank God, um, where we could discuss like, what are you doing? Is it working? And it was statewide. So that was very helpful. <coughs> so there you were able to get best practices of how people are surviving. Yeah, it, it took us a long time because um, switching over to Zoom and then the kids in public housing not having access to Wi-Fi, like <coughs> children outside of public housing was definitely a problem. Their parents not knowing how to navigate all this technology. And I was struggling to navigate the technology. I understand. Itself. So was everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we, we learn. And so as you're coming through, so when you get through the technology piece, when does the light come on and say, hey, we might survive this thing? Um. We tried to reopen a, on different occasions last year, but these kids really need in-person learning. So we're, I'm now trying to create a hybrid because there's also section eight kids that maybe can't get to our center that we also need to reach through hybrid. So what clicked for me is, okay, virtual is here to stay basically. And we need to figure out how to be successful in that realm also. All right, Mike King, Catherine's here with this. She is with Story. And how can people find you out there? We are uh, HTTPS backslash 
backslash storyva.org and our Instagram is storyva and Facebook is storyva1. So there, uh, there's somebody out there who's like you seven years ago. They have a dream. They want to save the world. <laughs> Walk people through the process of becoming a nonprofit and, and you say, boy, if somebody had told me that thing, uh-huh. give her a give, because there's somebody out there who wants to change the world like you. Yes, I've had friends that have started nonprofits, and I'm like, why are you doing that? <laughs> exactly. Because somebody didn't come to you and say, why are you doing this? Because something touched your heart. I didn't have a heart. choice. It was my job. <laughs> oh, okay. So you went over, but when you left the job, you went over and jumped in even more. Well, how this was set up was we got a, a three-year capacity building grant from back then it was VHDA. They've changed their name. Um, and the CEO of the Housing Authority said, Catherine, we need to create a nonprofit. I said, okay, three-year project in two years. And, you know, he put me project manager year two where when we were setting up all that paperwork and I had two consultants, thank God. Shout out to Amy Nissenson and Naj Thomas. I was like, can we give the money back? <laughs> this is very hard. It was a good idea two years ago. Um, and then in about year two and a half, he said, okay, you'll be the director of the nonprofit. And I was like, this, you know, this was not my career path that I chose. And I I literally applied for jobs nationwide. As far as Hawaii, I interviewed twice for a job with the United Way in Montana. I didn't care where I was going. (laughs) I just need to be out of here. Montana, (laughs) Hawaii. Yeah, those are real similar places. I know. Yeah. Yeah, so he was like, I'm not worried about you leaving. You'll be the director of story, not worried. And here I am, seven years later, still the director of story. What do you see as far as other, I always ask, like, where do we find that next generation of you? You know, when you, people who are going to be drawn to the nonprofit world, do you see them out there? Um, yes. Do- I, I had the opportunity um, to work with VCU service learning students, and they were really, really great volunteers, very passionate about our mission, very passionate about helping the kids. So definitely um, see them out there on college campuses. Um, of course, with um, the education system right now, teachers are under a lot of stress and leaving the profession, but um, definitely see college students that would be willing to volunteer and assist programs for sure. When you left VC, what was the plan? I actually wanted to be a director of development. I had interned with um, Hilliard House and that- Oh, that's the one, uh, what is it? That Ford Foundation? Is that the one for mothers? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, and they help people with uh, childcare. I don't, I haven't been there in a long time. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So it was like a transitional program when I was interning there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I wanted to fundraise and do all of that for a nonprofit was my goal. Or the other thing was corporate public relations. All right. Mike is here with this Catherine as well. What's the process for people to get involved with the story? What do they need to do? On our um, website, you can fill out an interest form and it gets emailed directly to me and I can contact you. Um, And sometimes we'll post um, volunteer positions on hands-on RVA also. For your organization, what what does a win look like? So how do you guys benchmark success? Um, With the youth programs, we... Um, when we started, the kids were like two grades behind in math and reading when we tested them. So getting them to grade level, of course, was a benchmark. And then we want them to be above grade level. So I'll tell the kids in the program, like, you're my business partner. This program is free because the investors are putting money into this and they're going to come visit sometimes. And so their return on investment is your grades. And I want you to at least get a B. And some of the kids were like, my mom said a C is okay. And I was like, yeah, but you stepped into my world now. <laughs> so you got to straighten up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some of them were very confused. Like, who do I listen to? And I'm like, listen to me if you want. We give gift cards as incentives for um, honor roll report cards. And they get a certificate of recognition. Um, so in, in five years, we took kids that were at a 36% skill level to 85%. 
for the kids, what does it feel like when you see that light go on? The light, you'd like, they get it. Um, I'm really happy because a lot of people assume that kids in public housing don't want to learn anything. Um, there's a school to prison pipeline that's in place for these kids. So I'm excited. If I can just totally disrupt that, then I'm going to do it. And so when the kids, when the kids come into the program, what do they expect? Do, do they know what they're signing up for? No, they don't. No. <laughs> My mom said a C was good. Now, who's this crazy lady right here saying, yeah. you got to get a B. Yeah. And you're talking about investors <laughs> and all this stuff right there. But they understand that. They do. And I don't make the presentations when the foundation officers come to the center. I let the kids do it. And so I had one child one time. Someone, one other child was leading the program officer around the center and showing him everything she was on a Chromebook making a whole Adobe Spark presentation. And by the time they were almost ready to leave, she had the whole presentation ready to go. And it's, I was just like, wow. Yeah, it, it sold itself. Yeah. It's a, so, uh, I, like I said, changing the world ain't cheap, free or easy. No. What does story need? Story needs individual donors. We're very heavily grant funded and I'm very thankful for the support of the foundations in the area. And we pulled on a new foundation um, that's specifically for um, organizations that support black girls. Um, but we need individual donors to balance out, you know, our funding. We need volunteers to come help in the after school and um, mentoring programs. Um, board board members we need board members um, with skill sets and um, some interns would be great too <laughs> some interns some free labor yes it's always good <laughs> nothing wrong with that one of my good mike catherine is here with us talking about story and the great things that they're doing down in the tri-cities area it's always a pleasure when when i talk to you you or an organization that's really out there on the front lines of making a difference like you said we hear about the, you know, the school to prison pipeline, but you don't hear about the kids who are, who are making it. Mm -hmm. And we don't give them a shout out, just like sometimes we shortchange our sponsors. So I know you have some sponsors you want to, you need to show some love to some of the folks who are out there, like your sponsors. Who do you, is there anybody you want to talk to, talk about and say, hey, these guys really help us out? Yes, our primary funding comes from the Hopewell Redevelopment and Housing Authority, the Cameron Foundation, and the John Randolph Foundation. Um, we just received a new um, operating grant from the Black Girls Dream Fund. Um, we've submitted Is that local? No, they're down in Alabama. Okay. Yeah, and they support um, programs for Black girls in the South. And who's, their, who's your grant writer? I am. <laughs> director, and you're the, okay, yeah. Let, let's go down to the hats that you wear. You are the grant writer. I am. You're the executive director? I am. Okay, what other hats do you wear? Um, community relations, public relations. I help run the program. We just hired a new program manager, thank God. So I'm hoping to hand that off. But I do work with the kids in the program right now, four days a week. And how long is the program that you work with the kids when, when they start until they finish? Um, it's a three hour program and we operate Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday. And they come all those dates, Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. And how long so is it based on a school year? So Hopewell just switched to balance calendar. Oh, that's a, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're trying to figure that out. Like how do we, cause they get these two week breaks three times a year, but otherwise now they're in school. Yeah. So this is tied to the school. So they go to the program when they're at school. No, it's not, not when they're in school, but during the school year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so when they complete the school year, is that does that mean that they are done with the program or do they go the next year and continue? Um, so when we were on a regular calendar year, I would also have a one month summer program that would be focused primarily on STEM activities. And then we do a field trip um, every week also. Um, so now we're probably going to incorporate STEM more into like daily activities since they're in school all year round now. So you said that you give out uh, gift cards for, for doing good. What's your, so some people think that's a good idea. Other people think that it's not a good idea. Clearly you guys think it's a good idea. Does it work? It does work. It does work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I, I agree and disagree because 
you're told straight up um, when you go to work for a housing authority, is my experience, the residents will need incentives or they will not participate. You know, the one thing is that I don't care when they put that. Sometimes they put it on disadvantaged people or poor people. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. If you give people something, they will do more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, there are the exceptions out there, but the rule is you offer people incentive. You want people to join a group. I, I join the, the military. When they need people, they give a bonus. Right. And you know what that does? People go down there and get it. Yeah. And that's the, that's the same thing. Well, you know, congratulations and kudos to the things that you're doing down in Hopewell. Uh, you are a friend of the program. Like I said, what we do is we offer assistance to nonprofits on a monthly basis with our nonprofit summit. And that helps you with uh, with uh, organizational skill fundraising as well as media attention. I always say there's a thousand nonprofits out there or more. Mm -hmm. How do you get your message above everyone else to be heard? Yeah, that's a good question. How do you do that? Now that I have some help with the program, um, I we put uh, communications and marketing into our new strategic plan. So I will work with the board members on developing the steps for that um, because I had to wear so many hats and was the only full-time staff person marketing, you know, when I could do it, that's when I did well, it. Well, clearly it worked <laughs> because I found you. So Catherine, thanks for coming on the program on the mic with Mike. We are the best business radio program around. You can hear us on the Mike King Biz radio network, which is ESPN Richmond, five to 7 a.m. Uh, 106.1, the choice, 105.3 gospel radio, we are there 2 to 3 uh, p.m. every day. And then we're on International Business Growth Radio. We'd like to thank you for tuning in. On the mic with Mike, Mike King Biz, we're out. Uh, take care. Thanks now.